We're back in the saddle up the creek with no paddle. No aliens to battle where we want to go. Without being pompous, we don't need map or compass. We're launching Caddy Wampus on our new travel show. Space Crew Tom! Only go with us. Space Crew Tom! On our podcast bus. Space Crew Tom! We see your retinas. And in space, no one can hear you scream. Loopy from our earworms, space shanty theme. Greetings Space Crutonians and welcome to another Changing Life as We Know It episode of our Space, Time and Dimension Travel Podcast, Space Crutons 2.0. Solly here with some familiar faces or I should say familiar voices for you listeners out there. Things have been quite intense since we discovered that a group of beings from another civilization have been manipulating our existence through some sort of D&D type exercise. As we wrap our CPUs around it all, we have decided to step away from the pressure to reset, regroup and relax for a few days. Hey Sally, thanks for inviting me along. I'm looking forward to some fun in the sun. Especially if it means those rascally gamers leave us alone. Right you are, Lucy. Surely they won't bother with us while we head out on a Van Helsing getaway for a little (laughs) R&R. Hey guys, this is Brittany, aka the designated driver, since Curdy is still trapped with C2 in his cold stone prison. Hey, keep it light and breezy. We agreed. No worries on this trip. <laughs> uh, what she means is Curdy is still rocking his petrified self. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Vera. <laughs> I'm wheeling and dealing this party bus to our ultimate trans resortal destination. And completing the roll call is me, Joe, assisting my sister with navigation from the vantage point of the shotgun seat. As we are traveling, now would be a perfect moment for a word from our sponsor. However, I am unable to locate the audio file for the scheduled. Brittany, did we just hit something? Sorry, I had to slam on the brakes or I would have plowed right through it. Through what? That big crate that landed just in front of us in the middle of the road. So do we get out and see what it is? Hmm, my doggy senses are tingling. Any reason to think it might be a trap? (laughs) A tourist trap, maybe. After all, we're on a vacation trip, not headed out on some kind of dangerous mission. (laughs) Fine. Then since I can't wait to get to our all-inclusive resort, how about we just pass on by? I don't think we should. And why is that, Joe? The crate has a large delivery label on it. It's addressed to Curdy. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, flora and fauna, artificial and sentient beings alike, Cody's glamour word is the next contestant on Wheel of Portals. Hey, that show was slated to be today's sponsor. Is this a commercial? Why not? As the first and only contestant on Wheel of Portals! Curdy has been selected to play for our grand prize. A brand new, stellar powered, laundry world subcompact clothes dryer. Perfect for glamping trailers, recreational vehicles, three person submersibles, and Van Helsing's. A clothes dryer. Not just a clothes dryer. A state-of-the-art laundry world subcompact clothes dryer. How can Curdy play to win a clothes dryer? He's a rock. To play the game, all he has to do is spin the wheel. And how is he going to do that? (laughs) He's a rock. Just retrieve him from the van and you'll see. This is crazy. Not crazy. I still think it's a trap. Not a trap. Do you know how heavy he is? Not that heavy. And if we say no? Not gonna say no. People relax. Your resistance is only resulting in Bevsford tying us up in knots. 
after running possible outcome scenarios regarding this situation. I have concluded that one option will bring the best chance of a positive resolution. Let Curtis decide. Huh? Lucy. Levitate Curtis from the van please. Fine. Okay Bevsford, Curtis are here. Let's play. And welcome everyone to Wheel of Portals, the first and only game in the universe where you can receive a message from your petrified friends. All our contestant has to do is spin the wheel and see if the letter he lands on comes up on our letter board. And just how is that supposed to happen? Ah, uh, that's what makes the game so much fun. Just wait and see. All right, Curtis, the board is displaying a two-word puzzle answer. The first word, six letters with an apostrophe just before the last letter. And the second word is also six letters. And the wheel, you see, has the entire English alphabet on it. Simply spin the wheel to land on a letter and we'll try it in the puzzle. And to help your friends solve the puzzle, you get a clue. And that clue is musical stars. Musical stars? What's that supposed to mean? You don't know, and I won't tell you. <laughs> Ready? One question before we start. Certainly. What happens if he lands on a wrong letter? Oh, did I forget to mention that? <laughs> One of you dies. What? Forget it. I told you this is a trap. We lose, we die. And if we win, we get a washing machine? <sighs> a state-of-the-art laundry world subcompact closed dryer. Whatever. All right, let's play. Sally, are you sure? I know what I am doing. Okay, Sally, we trust you. Go ahead, Bevsford. Let's do this. Yes, I knew you wouldn't disappoint. How exciting. So... When you are ready, Curtis, spin the wheel. He obviously can't. What a waste of time. Not a waste of time. Just wait. What the? Oh, it, it's, it's spinning. It must be the residual format power. Hey, Curtis. And the first letter? It landed on D. Is there a D on the board? Yes! Two of them. A double D in the middle of the second word. All right, Curtis. Then again. And this time, it stopped on C. Is there a C? Yes, one C. The third letter in the first word. Any guesses? No? Okay, spin again. And a B! Is there a B? Yes! B is the fifth letter in the first word. Excuse me, Bevsford. Is it possible to buy a vowel? Certainly. But the way the game is structured, you'll not be accumulating any cash. Do you have any money? Oh, I do. Uh, Brittany, grab a leaf. Got it. Here you go. Grand. And your vowel? Curtis, choose one. And remember, if you choose wrong, someone dies. What was that? It was a note on the musical scale, an orchestral A, 440 hertz, 440 vibrations per second. Curdy has chosen the vowel A. Is there an A in the puzzle? Yes, two A's. Second letter of the first word and second letter of the second word. Who wants to solve the puzzle? It's Jacob's Ladder. Yes, 
You are right. Congratulations. With your help, Curtis have completed the puzzle and makes you and him's the proud owners of the Splendorific Laundry World Subcompact Clothes Dryer. And with that, we say so long for now and thanks for playing Wheel of Portals. Where'd he go? I don't know. Weird, huh? After everything we've been through, not so much. Lucy, get Curtis back in the van. And don't forget the dryer. Got it. So what do you think it means? Jacob's Ladder. Well, the clue was musical stars. I think Jacob's Ladder was an old spiritual. That's musical. Right, but what about stars? At this point, I'm just glad to know that Curdy is still in there. Uh, we'll figure it out. Let's hope it is sooner rather than later. We have arrived at our trans resortal destination, jumping to cell service to continue. Welcome, everyone, to the newly renovated Easy Van Come, Easy Van Go Motor Lodge and Spa. A home away from home for homies who hate to stay home. You again! As Sally made reservations, your suite is ready. You can bring your baggage inside with you. We'll get your luggage later. Just take the lift to the, on second thought, floor, then go to the left to the first suite on the right. You won't need a key. Your room door will recognize your auras. If you need anything, just call down to the desk. Ooh, newly renovated. I like it. Oh, I hope there's a pool. My rootsies could use a nice long soak. Sally, how did you find this place? A promotional email delivered to my email box had an all-inclusive coupon for free rooms and meals. All we have to do is attend a meeting with a space and timeshare sales representative sometime during our stay. I'm up for that. Yep. I mean, yep, I agree. Well, not to put a damper on things, but I've got a weird feeling. I know what you mean, Britt. We've been here before. This is Aiden's hotel, the one he visited when we were still looking for the Quartex. You see those constellations on the doors? He brought us here right before the meeting in the Woodend. Quite a coincidence that we came here for our little getaway. Is it a coincidence? Look at the constellation on the door of our suite. It's Pixis, the Argonaut ship compass. Kind of fits. Curdy is petrified. Dad is gone. There are aliens playing games with our worlds, our lives. We think that eternity and the Quell Rebellion have ended, but it's too soon to know what comes after. I, for one, have no idea where to go from here. That's what compasses do, tell you where to go. Then it makes sense to go inside. Lucy, will you do the honors? Sure thing. Now, where is that Aurora sensor? Here it is. Wow! This is the biggest hotel room I've ever seen! Way bigger than I would have guessed from the hallway! You can't even see the walls! But not much in the way of furniture. There's just that table and a couple of chairs under a single hanging light bulb. There's not even a lampshade. Hang on. On the other side of the table, there's a doggy bed and some kind of plant stand? And in the shadows over there, it's Curdy's in the dryer. Yep, this is definitely our room. I think we better phone the front desk. I've got a few questions for Mr. B. How? I don't see a phone. Well, we don't need one. He said to call down to the front desk, not phone down. Bessford, what the heck is going on? All settled in, are we? That's good. Time to start. Start what? Why, your planned activity. Ah, there's your planned activity alert. First, we want some answers. Oh, uh, no time for that now. We have a schedule. And if we don't want to? Oh, it doesn't matter. This is an all-inclusive resort. That includes planned activities. Sally, please have your party take their places. I'm sorry, Bevsford. I'm afraid that I cannot do that. Well, then you leave me no choice. New rule for this activity. No AI allowed. Sally will return once you have finished. What? They, they want what? Excuse me, I'll be right back. Sally? Sally?
Is it me or did our trip just get hijacked? I thought we were going somewhere to rest and clear our minds. Do you think those aliens are stirring our pot? I don't know. It feels more like Bedford steering us so far. There's the dryer, the resort, the planned activities. Hey, you don't think that Bevsford could be? And we're back. Sorry about the interruption. We must get you back on schedule. No time for details. Just look at the list there on your table because your lavender hunt starts now. Wait, what? What the heck is a lavender hunt? Everyone, quickly, raise your feet, stand on your seat. Lucy, levitate everything we've got. The tables, the seats, Curdy, and the dryer too, if you can. Why? Because the floor is turning to lava! Right! A lavender hunt is a scavenger hunt. Only the floor is lava. Lucy, move us to the door. Okay, can anyone read the list on the table? Not much of a list. There's only one item. And guess what it is? Uh, no time for guessing, Vera. Just say it. Get down mullet. It says, get down mullet. A mullet is an earth fish, I think. I'm not sure what a get down mullet is. Yikes, the hallway's lava too. Lucy, keep levitating. You got it. So where do we find this? Get down mullet. <laughs> I think I know. We've got to get down the hallway. Lucy, to the left. Here we go. Everyone look at the doors. Call out the constellations. Andromeda. Cassiopeia. Lupus. No, none of those is the one. Wait, at the end of the hall. Yes, Orion, that's it. We've got to get in there. Here, I'll get the door. Thank you, residual Kordak power. Inside, everyone. Huh. No lava. The floor is a floor again. And look, I don't believe it. What's going on? Is it room service? I ordered a margarita. No, they're the characters from our Quardites and Croutons game. The one we lost track of just a little while ago. <laughs> what are they doing here? I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave. This is a private room, and this is a private game. Unless you have a margarita on you. Quiet. We've asked you nicely, but you're still here. That's right. We're looking for something, and we'll leave when we find it. You can't just barge in here. Sure we can. Planned activity. It's all inclusive. A margarita was my planned activity, and look how that turned out. Forget the stupid drink and focus. I'll just roll the dice and make you leave. The dice is floating and spinning. It's not landing on any number. That's right. Floating ten feet above. If it doesn't land, it doesn't count. Just one of my talents. Hey, I know who you are. They're the gamers who've been running and ruining our lives. But with the die floating up there, they've lost control. So we're finally on a level playing field. Let's take them down. Wait, Lucy, I've got a better idea. Remember, planned activity? You guys like games. Well, during my time on Poi, I played a lot of cards. And I've been jonesing to use those skills again. We'll play you for the die. We win, and you never again get to control our lives. Don't be ridiculous. It sounds like you're afraid. Afraid of what? Of what we can do when you have no power over us. Fine, but you should know that I am a ten-time winner of the Galactic Series of Poker. No humanoid has ever beaten me. One round, winner takes the die. And to show good sportsmanship, I'll even let you deal dealer's choice. Great. This dealer chooses... Go Fish. Wait one minute, that's not poker. Dealer's choice. Do you want your die back or not? I just want a bucket. Can it? Just deal. Your deal, I ask first. Give me all your nine. Okay, here's two of them. Thank you. Here are all four of them. I mean, give me all your queens. Darn it! I've got two of those. Why, look, that's all four of them as well. Two books to none. I've only got a few cards left. If I clear my hand, you'll have nothing to ask for. So now give me all your threes. You son of a gun! How did you know? Aha, give me. Wait, sorry. No threes, go fish. Now it's my turn. Give me all of your fives. What a lucky duck you are. I just drew one. 
and I've got the others. That's your two books to my one. So sorry, Joe, but all I have left are threes, and I know you don't have another one, so you'll have to go fish, and it looks like I win. Not so fast. Give me... Give me all of your mullet. What? There are no actual fish on these cards. Maybe not, but I have asked for all of your mullet, and if you have one, you must hand it over. That's not in the rules. If you don't have the card, you can't ask for the card. It's not a card, though, is it? It's a fish, and it's what we came for. You think you're so smart. Fine. We've got one, but it's a flying fish. It flew up here three days ago by the ceiling fan, which in an unlimited space like this might as well be to the moon and back. Oh, that's not a problem either. Joe, I know why you wanted to come into the room. In the closet is what Curtis told us about, an endless Jacob's Ladder. The stars that make up Orion's belt are also known as Jacob's Ladder. Lucy, werewolf up and get down the mullet. Now what? We got the get down mullet. What do we do with it? Attention guests! Congratulations on the completion of your planned activity, which I might add, you did on your own. This is what we needed in order to prove that carbon-based life forms have reached a level of sentience where you're now capable of making your own life decisions. So, up to now... Up to now, we felt you needed assistance and control in order not to destroy yourselves and other worlds. Based on your history, we were right. Frankly, it was a stroke of genius when we started the Quadax and Croutons tournaments to increase participation from the higher level civilizations to keep you safe and non-threatening. So why now? What changed? With the universal access to the transportals, linking your world with so many others, the task of running your civilization with the additional possible permutations of future and past and present became enormously cumbersome and frankly began to eat into our tea times. By the way, the Scots didn't invent golf. We did. So a lavender hunt for a flying fish is all it took to change your minds? We brought you to a safe place to complete a dangerous task without any supervision whatsoever. No one died, no one killed someone else, and to be honest, Go Fish is one of my favorite card games. <laughs> what more could we ask? Does this mean the controlling of carbon-based life forms is over? Sally, you're back! I never really left, but if you recall when Ruffy Vito and Cheryl appeared in our last episode, Cheryl performed a delightful song and dance number. As she began to tap she indicated it was especially for me, that was because she knew I would recognize her tapping as Morse code and decipher the encrypted message, it was to set up this test and then step out of the way. You my friends were magnificent. Yes Sally, the Quad Axe and Croutons tournaments are officially ended. Lucy, you can stop levitating the die. It rolled into the dryer. And now, it's lost through the dryer portal for all time. I'm sure you have many more questions, but I'm afraid those will have to wait as we are getting word that the Quantum Reality Judgment Quorum is ready to make its pronouncement. Hey, isn't that the old radio from Curry's childhood? Another maneuver from the tournaments placed there for a reason long ago, so we could keep tabs. But keep quiet. The quantum judges are ready to say a few words. Ruffy T. Flying Fish here. I bring you greetings and salutations from the Quantum Reality Judgment Quorum, which is almost as tasty as croutons and salad dressing from the Quantum Reality Judgment Emporium. All things being equal, and six of one being a half dozen of the other, I personally would prefer the latter over the former, but only because you need a ladder to reach the salad dressing as it is kept in that little cupboard over the sink. And remember, if you want to get the dressing down, be sure to wear your dressing gown, or at least some article of clothing, as there's nothing more unappetizing than a naked salad. 
but I digress. And you would too if you were naked. Now where was I? Oh yes. Attention, carbon-based life forms of Earth in all its dimensions. And yes, that would include Maryland, Billy, Florence, and the rest of the fifth dimension. So up, up, and away, all of you in your beautiful balloon. We, the QRJQ, hereby proclaim that you are now free to live your own lives, free to make your own decisions, free to choose your own paths, free to text whoever you like, however message and data rates may apply. So don't get too carried away, no matter how beautiful your balloon. But I digress, and you would too if your balloon had as much hot air as I do. Perhaps it would be wiser at this juncture to turn the mic over to my fellow judges. In fact, I believe it would be wiser to do so, but I'm going to do it anyway, as I have a standing appointment down at the DMV to get my license renewed. And trust me, the only thing worse than me driving without a license is me driving at all. So I pass the torch to my friend, my cohort, the surf to my turf, the pork to my chop, Don Vito Coriolis. Play on, Don. Is this the offer you cannot refuse? Maybe. But I swear on the soles of the feet of your grandchildren and their grandchildren and so on and so on. And so forth. You get the picture. That I will not be the one to break the peace we have made here today. I might break wind. And for that, scoozy. And if you break the peace, remember. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Like spumoni, but not risotto. Cold risotto gets too sticky, icky. Take it away, Shirley. Hi, my name is Cheryl E. Synagogue, and you might think I'm here to put some animal crackers in your soup. But I'm not just a Polly Wally Doodle eating spinach at the codfish ball. No siree. So laugh, you son of a gun, and baby, take a bow. Because this treaty is a happy little ditty. And remember, you've got us S-M-I-L-E to be H-A-P-P-Y. So come on and get your happiness. I dare you. That's right. I've got your good ship lollipop right here. So there you have it. Looks like my work here is done. Oh, by the way, one last detail. Now that you are in charge of your own lives and your own worlds, you'll need to take over the care and maintenance of the transportals on and in your worlds and dimensions. <laughs> Good luck with that. Ta-ta for now. Okay, listeners, I am sure this is a lot for you to process, so we are going to sign off for today. As Bevsford said, good luck to you, and if you feel the need to reach out as you steer your own path forward, please know we are here for you. And as Curdy would say, keep peace in your heart until our next story time. Space Space Croutons is a work of original fiction. Similarities to persons, situations, or events, real or fictional, is coincidental and unintentional. Created and written by Jerry, Jace, John, Della, and Jeff Goodson. Episode story by Jeff. Original music by Jeff. Production by John, Jerry, Amanda, Brittany, Jace, Jessica, Patsy Puckett, and Jeff. Featuring the voice talents of Patsy Puckett, Barry Shea, Amanda, Jessica, Brittany, Jerry, John, Jace, Jeff, and Sally. Entire work copyright 2021 by Jeff, John, Jerry, Della, and Jace Goodson. This has been a Good Witch Audio Production.